Need some help deciding the best way to build your deck? I'm Ryan with Trex, partnering with the Home Depot to walk you through how to build a 12 foot by 16 foot Trex deck in your backyard. This is a great size for DIYers and offers plenty of space for entertaining. Starting with a completed pressure treated lumber frame, today we'll be finishing the project with Trex Enhanced Naturals Rocky Harbor Decking and Fascia, paired with Trex Enhanced Railing in Classic White. Let's roll up our sleeves and get started. Once you've verified everything you ordered has arrived on site and brought it to the area of the deck build, you're ready to set up your cutting area. I find that positioning my sawhorses so that they're parallel with the orientation of the deck boards makes cutting easier. As for hand tools, the must-haves are a hammer and rubber mallet, a 7-inch or 8-inch speed square, a pencil or marker, a chalk line with blue, orange, purple, or white chalk, a 25-foot tape measure, a utility knife, and several clamps to act as a helping hand. As for power tools, the must-haves are a drill with wood drill bits and driver bit tips, plus a driver extension, a circular saw with a fresh blade, a jigsaw with a fresh wood cutting blade, and a miter saw with a fresh blade. While this video isn't about deck framing, I do want to point out a couple things before we get started installing our first deck board, which for me is always at the outside of the deck frame. First, I want to point out how we're supporting our picture frame border. Here we've added two joists as blocking one to support half the picture frame board and the other to support the deck boards coming into the picture frame at a right angle. These are called structural blocking joists. Blocking joists are secured on both ends with Simpson Strong Tie 7 inch angles or L70Z angles. And second, that we've applied Trex Protect joist and beam tape. Trex Protect acts to extend the life of the frame by sealing around fasteners as they penetrate the pressure treated lumber as well as minimizing moisture into the frame overall. As you can see, I'm using the Trex Enhanced board without a grooved edge for the outside perimeter of the deck. Picture frame borders and stair treads are some of the two most common applications for square edge boards. I built the frame taking into account the thickness of the Trex fascia and the overhang of the picture frame border, which means my picture frame board, which is my first board, will overhang the rim joists on both ends by an inch and a quarter. I like to work from the outside rim back towards the house. That way, I'll always have a full board out front where it's most noticeable. To simplify cutting around these posts, I pre-cut and notched the first two boards. Before I start measuring and cutting the first board, I like to install some 12 inch pieces of scrap wood to serve as blocks which help me maintain a consistent overhang the entire length of the board. In this case, the blocks will be an inch and a quarter wide. Rather than measuring for the length of the picture frame board, with the inch and a quarter block in place, I can clamp the square edge board in place on top of the rim joist. Now, it's as easy as marking the end of the board at 45 degrees to the block. It's important to get a clean cut on the mitered corners. For this, you have two options, a miter saw or a circular saw. Either work, but both work best with a new or very sharp blade. Once I've cut the full board to length, I then clamp it to the post. Now I'm ready to mark the notches around the posts. The width of the notch will be the width of the post plus one quarter inch on each side of the post. The depth of the notch will be from the edge of my inch and a quarter block minus one quarter inch. Why oversize the notch by a quarter inch? To allow for any expansion or contraction of the frame and to some degree the decking. Plus, it just makes installing the deck board easier. Rather than trying to force the jigsaw blade to turn a sharp corner, I drill a hole in one inside corner that's larger than the blade. This allows me to easily turn the corner and continue with my cut. I like to make the first two cuts with a circular saw, then finish the notch cuts with a jigsaw. Since the notch cuts won't be seen, these cuts don't need to be exact or perfectly straight. The oversized notch will be hidden under the rail post sleeve and skirt. After I attach some more inch and a quarter blocks to the outside of the rim joist, I flushed the edge and ends of my first boards to the blocks and clamped it in place. It's important to use an approved composite deck screw when fastening Trex decking through the surface or face of the board, which is what's necessary to fasten your picture frame board. These screws have a double set of threads that promote a clean and finished look. A standard wood deck fastener will create an undesirable result 
so be sure to use the right fastener. Fasten the picture frame board with two screws at each joist, one at least an inch from the inside and the other on the outside, making sure you're always into the rim joist below. To avoid splitting, even though I'm at least an inch from the edge and end, I like to pre-drill. I use an eighth inch wood drill bit just through the deck board itself, but not into the frame. We're now ready for our second board, which I'll also cut to the exact length and mark and cut the notches for our railing support posts. Determining the length is as simple as measuring from block to block, then subtracting 11 and a quarter inches in this case. This takes into account I'll have a five and a half inch picture frame board on each end, which equals 11 inches, as well as an eighth inch gap between the deck board and the picture frame board on each end. This allows for movement in the frame as well as expansion and contraction of the deck board. From here, I just repeated the process of marking and notching. Since the picture frame board doesn't have a groove to accommodate our hidden fastener, I ripped a piece of wood for a required quarter inch gap, positioned the end of the board to five and five eighths inches in from the block, then fastened the outside edge of the second board with an approved exposed fastener. With the second deck board secured, I can now switch to the Trex Hideaway Hidden Fastening System for most of the remaining deck boards. The look of a deck installed with the Trex Hideaway Hidden Fastening System is incredibly clean and refined, so it's no wonder most Trex decking is installed using this system. The system consists of a glass-filled nylon clip with a preset stainless steel fastener that provides the required quarter-inch gap between each groove board. Each bucket includes 360 self-gapping universal deck fasteners, which will complete a 200 square foot deck, framed at 16 inches on center, similar to this one. The bucket also includes 16 start clips, a drive bit, and instructions. There are a couple methods for installing the Trex Hideaway Hidden Fastener. First is the Trex Universal Fastener Installation Tool. The fastener tool holds the fastener vertically and hands-free. It also provides a means for applying some pressure on the board during installation. The tool allows you to set the screw completely in a single step, saving time. Once the screw is set, you just pull the tool away and move on to the next joist. A second method uses a narrow scrap piece of groove Trex decking to trap the fastener between the scrap piece and the leading edge of the deck board. With this method, it's recommended that you initially only seat the screw part way down on the first pass which means you'll need to return for a second step of fully seating the screw after you've secured the next board. It's not my preferred method, but if you didn't purchase the fastener tool, this is a legitimate option. Now I just repeat the process as I work my way back towards the house. For fastening, I simply make sure each board is snug to the hidden fastener before installing the next one. You can either start in the middle of the board and work your way toward each end, or you can work from one end to the other. It's purely a matter of personal preference. If you're working with another person, I recommend starting with a clip in the center, then one in each end, then installing the remaining intermediate clips. Once I install these last two feel boards, I'll be ready to cut in my picture frame border on each side of the deck. Just like the first two boards and those in the middle around the posts, I cut the boards to length and notched for my rail posts, checking the placement and secured the second to last board. Using a bar to pry the last board in place, I fastened the edge closest to the house using a Trex approved color match composite deck screw. Now it's time for us to install our picture frame boards on the sides of the deck. You can always use a chalk box like this one and attach the line to the ends of our pre-cut boards and snap a line. While cutting along a chalk line is common, it is a cut that requires a high level of skill to execute well. If you do choose the chalk line method, blue, purple, orange, and white chalk are all fine, but never black or red chalk, as they'll permanently stain the decking. Here's a trick to keep the cut straight, regardless of your skill level. Pull the guard up and set the saw blade against the pre-cut deck boards. Mark the edge of the saw shoe. Shim a 2x4 so that it's even with the mark. The 2x4 will serve as a guide. Now firmly clamp the 2x4 to the rail posts. Provided you keep the shoe of the saw tight against the 2x4 guides, your finished cut will be as straight as the guide itself. Lift up the guard enough to clear the deck board. Slide the saw shoe flush with the 2x4 guides and let down the guard. 
gently squeeze the trigger and begin cutting, making sure that the shoe is staying tight against the 2x4 guides. Take it slow, it's ideal if you make the cut in one motion. Clean up the area thoroughly because we're ready to move on to the next step. For the two side picture frame boards, measuring and cutting is very similar to the front picture frame board. Once I'm satisfied with the miter cut and overall length, I just repeat the process of marking and notching for my rail posts, like I did across the front of the deck. As for the end gaps, it depends on the outside temperature during installation. Today is one of the warmest days of the year for the area, so I'll leave a slight gap at the 45 degree cut and an eighth inch gap at the wall. Make sure to keep the required eighth inch into edge gap we planned for in our layout. Just as before, I'm using the Trex approved composite deck screws to secure the picture frame border to the frame at a maximum of 16 inches on center. With the picture frame border done, I'm ready to move on to installing the decking on the stairs. There's a particular order I like to follow when decking and cladding the stairs, and that's install the fascia on the outside stringers, install the riser, and lastly, install the treads. The ideal time to mark and cut your fascia for your outside stringers is when you're done cutting the stringers themselves. At that time, it's as easy as tracing the entire stringer onto the back of the fascia, using a stringer as a pattern, then cutting it with circular and jigsaws. Trying to measure the fascia to length after the stringers are installed is quite challenging. Before I installed my stair stringers, I added a two x four block to the second stringer in on both sides. This will support my picture frame border. Each deck board needs full bearing on its own 2x, so the block is a simple and effective way of satisfying the requirement for a picture frame tread. With the stringer fascia cut, I pre-drilled for the fascia screws and flushed the top of the fascia with a stringer, and in this case, used eight Trex approved fascia screws to secure the fascia. The rise on my stairs is six and a half inches, so I ripped down the enhanced fascia to match the rise. For the width, I flushed up one end of the riser mark the other end, and cut it to length. I position the riser, then use two composite deck screws per stringer to attach. Then I just repeat this exact process as I work my way down the stairs. The last step in the sequence will be to install the stair treads. The best choice for stair treads is the non-groove deck board, sometimes called a square edge board. Like the deck, I'll picture frame the stair treads as well, which makes for a consistent look. Really, measuring and cutting for picture frame treads is basically the same as picture framing the deck. I'll start by measuring the three pieces that make up the picture frame portion of the tread. First, I need the width of the outer tread, plus one inch, which will give me a half inch overhang on each side. Next, I need the length of the return pieces, plus three quarters of an inch for my overhang across the front, which is required by code in most areas. I want to make sure the corners of the picture frame treads are aligned and spaced slightly, and check the overhang. Just like the risers, Stair treads need to be fastened with two approved composite deck screws per stringer. I then measured for the rear tread, subtracting from my eighth inch gap on each end, then cut and fastened. With all of the decking installed, we're ready to move on to video two of three, installing Trex Enhanced Fascia.